All right, everyone. Guess what time it is? It's interview time. <laughs> we love interview time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're not watching us on YouTube, we're kind of dancing a little bit. So with that, go watch us on YouTube. and You can see an actual video of us with the lovely Dr. Jolene Brighton. We love Jolene. Jolene has been on our show before. Um, and we absolutely loved recording with Jolene and love all of her work and learn so much from her every single time that we get the blessing of being in her presence. So without further ado, even though y'all listeners have heard a little bit about Dr. Brighton Jolene in our intro, Jolene, can you please tell us how you got to where you are today in the field of sexuality? Firstly, can I say I love how you dropped your voice and said Dr. Jolene Brighton, and I just felt so special in that moment. <laughs> so um, for people who don't know me, I'm a board certified in naturopathic endocrinology. I'm a hormone doctor. That's the fancy way of saying that. Um, and it was actually my patients who propelled me into studying more sexual health. So I'd been exposed to a kink education from kink community, sex workers, like you name it. And I thought like, hmm, yeah, I'm, I'm like, you know pretty on top of this. And then patients started bringing me questions that I was like, no one ever taught me this. I actually don't know the answer. And so that propelled me into exploring the field further and finally pursuing my sex counseling certification so that I could be better equipped to help patients navigate what's normal, what's not normal, and then get them over to providers who can help them if it falls outside my expertise, which is if you need couples counseling, you need a deeper dive into all of that. That's when I can refer you. Nice. You're you're an absolute genius, and I loved when you were on the show I don't talking know about, about that. But thank you, you. are. <laughs> I, I your book Beyond the Pill. I've recommended it to basically I don't know probably at least ten people off the top of my head, and then those people recommend it, and all of them are like, "Oh my god, amazing!" I made lists of like the the supplements I needed to to buy to help my PMS, and it really has changed my life. And even younger people, too, even right? younger, yeah. absolutely. Um, and so this book is this normal is incredible. It's it's like a, a step in another direction. And congrats on your baby. You oh, have another you. baby. I saw that. I was so excited for you. So uh, we'll talk about that later. But <laughs> first off, so what is quote unquote normal with the air quotes when it comes to sexuality? Yes. So the whole first uh, section of the book is sex. Like everything sex. What's funny is that like when I set out to write this book, I was like, oh, we should have a chapter on sex. When I dove into the questions that my patients ask, like this is who wrote this book is like my patients, my um, listeners online, like my readers, my social media community, like everybody who asks me questions comes to my weekly Ask Dr. Brighton on Instagram. I com I took all of their questions. I was like, okay, I'm going to answer all these questions. I realized the majority of questions were about sex. And so straight out the gate, I was like, this is going to move. It's going to be a whole section. But it's about your sexual self. And so straight out the gate, first chapter, sex, what's normal? Because this is such a top, like a hot question. Like people are like, is kink normal? Yes. And it's funny that we even classify it as something other, like some other type of sex when you consider that like, one in five people have engaged in kink, probably more if they told the truth. Uh, people will ask about cadence of sex, like how often they're having sex, like what kind of sex they're having. And so I walk through all of that in the book and I give, I really wanted to say like, you know, what's normal for you is normal. And there is no like normal time to engage in your first sexual activity, these kinds of things. And yet I'm like, no one's going to be satisfied with that. And so I did break down if you are someone who's like curious, because you're a human of like, how often should I be having sex? Uh, there's no should in this book. There is the, hey, on average, this is what people's do what people are doing. But recognize that what people explain as sex, that definition varies from person to person. So there's a whole chapter on called sex of all kinds, because um, I don't know about you guys, but most people are taught that sex means a penis goes in the vagina and that's sex. And then foreplay is the thing that you do so that there can be vaginal penetration. And reality foreplay is sex. Like that is all sex. And not everybody's having orgasms with penile penetration, like vaginal penetration, like with penile sex. And so um, that's the other thing about what's normal is like the goal shouldn't always be like something in the vagina. So I love the expansive definition of normal. And we've talked about this before that abnormal is the new normal, which also is like contradictory, but also like, and I love what you said also, what's normal for you is normal. 
Uh, and that there just there just really isn't one way to do it. And then the whole like penis and vagina and that's how it's supposed to be. Oh, my God. That's why we have a whole podcast about how that's actually just n- not the truth. And there's it's so much it. to it. It's not it. There's so much to yeah. it. So and I want to kind of talk a little bit about we have so many other things. We're talking about like queefing and squirting and, and something about butt, butt lighting or butt lightning. I don't even know. But we'll get there later, everyone. So what's the orgasm gap? We've talked about it before, but I always really love hearing other people's opinions on it. So what is the orgasm gap and why is it a thing? Oh, I joke in the book that it's like a gap in pleasure that's so great that not even the best air do- devil could jump it. Like that is, <laughs> that is what it feels like, right? So the orgasm gap, this applies to heterosexual couples, um, mostly his. Uh, so you're going to see cis hetero men have I think 5% of them are going to orgasm, which is like the narrative of the expectation, right? Like a lot of this seated in the idea of like sex is for babies and men having orgasms is necessary for babies. So we should just expect that, which is why a lot of women in these heterosexual relationships have been left in the dust with the only about 65% reporting that they have an orgasm in that partnered relationship. Now you put women on their own, and over 90, 90% of them can make themselves orgasm and like within four minutes. So whenever people come in with the narrative of like, well, it's just so hard to make women orgasm. Why is it that like lesbians aren't having this like differential? Like we're not seeing that. This is a phenomenon that is only happening in these heterosexual couples. Yeah. And it's probably an archaic, almost like, I don't want to call it thought, but it's an archaic system, right? It's like, oh, uh, I don't understand my partner who's a vulva owner's bits and I have a penis. So I'm just going to assume that that I just need to penetrate and I don't even care about the clitoris, right? Mm-hmm. Because what is it there for? Isn't it just like a thing attached? I don't know. I'm, I'm being a, a dumb penis owner right now. I'm hoping that, <laughs> that most of them will do more research and learn yeah. about why there's an orgasm gap. So uh, that's a call to action for you. And in porn. And also, in, like, yes. yeah, I do. Yeah, I do what I see in porn and in porn I spend a lot yeah. of time thrusting really hard not a lot of like you know, slow warm up and grinding and like I'm just going to focus on your external vulva labia and clitoris for like 20 minutes. I would minutes. get bored as fuck watching that though myself. Yeah and the, because it's, it's porn you just want to get to the point. Yeah, but I'm that's like yo not, let's get to it. But hey. you'd probably get bored as fuck if you're just having sex where it's just like slam it in all the time it probably wouldn't feel that good. Also I mean yeah. like, uh, so, yeah. so <laughs> I like promise- that face goes for both. I'm bored, uh, and then you're coming at me with a jackhammer. Uh. Uh, yeah, there's yes. got to be a happy medium of some sort. And I do love the title of this book. Is this normal? Because normal is based on a lot of statistics. And I always like to say that. And I'm sure because you come from this very medical slash scientific background that you probably go into that because, again, what is normal? And that's a a different piece of the multi layers of questions that I want to ask, which is the next one. But first, why? Because this is about the clitoris, which is important because I own one. And so does Amy. I do. I own one. Why is the power of the clitoris still such a mystery for a lot of folks out there? Oh, gosh. Well, you know, there's there's a big problem in medicine. So if we look at, you know, as you're making jokes, uh, at, you know, at the at the brunt of these jokes, I don't think that that's where they want to land. And yet they do so often because so much information is withheld. It's like a lot of gatekeeping about the clitoris. And if we go back in time in history, medicine actually took it out. They took it out of anatomy textbooks. Now, um, the average person doesn't spend time in anatomy textbooks, but I can tell you there's a lot of real estate for male anatomy, which is like page after page of penis. And like, I don't know, for me, I'm like, if you've seen one, you've seen them all, friends. (laughs) (laughs) We love love the penis over here, everyone. We're not mocking your penises. We're just saying there's like a lot more out there for you and we're still working on getting well, more for us. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's not even about that. It's about like what what is the real estate that the female body gets to take up in these medical textbooks? So the clitoris was actually taken out of the medical textbooks. We didn't have the, the figures of the clitoris. Then it was like claimed to be discovered in the late 90s. And by discovered, <laughs> I mean acknowledged. It was acknowledged. And so, you know, for a long time, the idea was like the clitoris is just this 
this like little button. I mean, it's so hard to find. And women don't even like sex anyways. And making a woman an orgasm, it's like finding a unicorn in the forest. And I'm like, well, Harry Potter, you can find a unicorn in the forest. It is possible. Let me teach you how, which is why there's not just one, but there are two clitoral diagrams, which I actually commissioned them to be hand drawn. I was like, I need a clitoris in a vulva. Like I need the vulva to be shown so that people who do not own vulvas can understand where the clitoris is. So we've got that medicine, took it out, just blocked it, was like, we're not going to talk about it because like female pleasure, that threatens us. Then we've got Freud, who like is literally the worst thing to happen to sex. I mean, to a lot of things, but like sex. Amen, amen. amen to that he just envy everyone. Yeah, we just have, yeah. a, we all wish we just had a bunch of dicks. Yeah. <laughs> but like that, that fool had no idea the power of the clitoris because I'm like, Your penis has to pee on ejaculate and it's on the outside. So it can't be that sensitive. The clitoris made from the same tissue. Okay. Well, actually the penis is made from the clitoris. That really goes that way in biology, but the clitoris doesn't have to do anything but pleasure you. That's it. Gets to have more nerves, gets to be more sensitive. Like that is its sole purpose. And like here people can acknowledge that like you must stroke a penis to make a man orgasm. But then they're like, oh, making a woman orgasm in the clitoris? Like, why would we do that? Well, once upon a time, Freud got it in everybody's heads and like people just started nodding where they he was like, oh, the, the clitoral orgasm is infantile. A woman should try to achieve a vaginal orgasm. And I'm like, who does that benefit? Like nice manipulation tactics, sir. Like that, that benefits a penis owner. And so what you're saying is that like, whether you like it or not, you should aspire to because you're like, it just feels like such basic manipulation of like, oh, well, if you were like a real woman, then and it's like, it's not like that. Because less than 20% of women report orgasming with vaginal penetration. Whereas like the key, the way to orgasm is stimulating the clitoris. And what's really cool is, is that if you make her come first, you're more than likely to make her come with penetration. So if, you know, you're working with someone who has a vulva, stimulating the clitoris, bringing them to orgasm, then doing penetration, more likely to have that orgasm with penetration. So that's a few of the reasons. And then like, of course, like sex ed is so problematic. Like, where do we even start with that? They're like, um, see this, this is a vagina. Babies come in and babies come out and penises go in and like, you know, penises go in, make the babies. This is the way the sperm goes in. Babies come out, period blood comes out. And it's like, but there's no other talk about that. And like, sometimes they don't even tell you what a vulva is or a labia. They're just like inside vagina, outside vagina. I'm like, there's not in fact an outside vagina. <laughs> and then they show you a picture of the baby coming out and then it scares you to death. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. ah! Or, all the, or the, all the STIs or all the yeah. things. It's like, basically, sex is can't, is is kind of scary. So, um, and also, but really fun for a lot of people. Are you and looking at the diagram? Harry Potter, though, the diagram. Or, yeah, she has on. Like, oh, it reminds me of Gandalf. The sorting hat. Oh, I always think of the sorting hat. That's <laughs> like the awesome. Clit- the clitoris is like, no, you are Slytherin. Like, you are oh. Gryffindor. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. It's amazing. And the, the diagrams are very helpful to even understand your own body if you're a clitoris owner or if you're if you're a clitoris lover yeah you yeah. want to go yeah you want to dab and there's no leather. outside vagina that's no. a quote that goes down I on a t-shirt st- still here so i still hear some e- sex educators who still refer to the vulva as a vagina i still hear yeah. some sex educators who say the clitoral orgasm is inferior mm-hmm. and that oh. the ultimate way is to have an internal orgasm g-spot cervical orgasm not going to name names but I have it. Just every time I but hear we're that, we're side eyeing you. <laughs> it, it's so fucking upsetting to me, and also yeah. it's all connected. So like when I have oh, yeah. stimulation inside my pussy with fingers or with a sex toy or with a cock, and I'm having something that seems like an internal orgasm, I'm pretty sure that has a lot to do with my clit like a lot yeah. to do with my clitoris and the stimulation that is happening outside as well, as well as the tissue that's connecting inside. So I, it's, it's just like, it's just so, yeah, infuriating, as I said, and just so fucking backwards. Yeah, it's well, it's amazing. and then it's just like, go back to biology. So, okay, really simplified, okay, because I hate to break it to some people because they don't like to hear it, but like, uh, chromosomes are not always just binary. Like we talk about XX and XY, but like nature likes to throw some 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 random combinations out there. But if we think about it simplistically, because that's the best way to wrap our head around it, we all start out phenotypically female. 
there is a wash of testosterone that comes through. Should you have that Y chromosome and should it respond? Because it doesn't always, but should it respond to that hormone? You now differentiate. You leave labia, clitoris behind and you go penis, scrotum, like you go a different direction. So that when you just come back to the basic biology, and if you can accept that stroking a penis brings the majority of men to orgasm or penis owners, then you should be able to accept that stroking a clitoris will bring the majority of vulva owners to orgasm. Like it's just, it's so simple that I don't even understand why we're arguing it. And you're absolutely right. That clitoris, um, when you get into the orgasm chapter and there is an image and I show you that how that wishbone structure drops down and around like the, the opening of the vagina, like odds are that people who are orgasming with vaginal penetration is because of clitoral stimulation. And even like the G-spot is so highly debated and people get so like big mad about it. And I'm like, I don't freaking care. Do you feel good? Are you happy? Do you end this and say, I'm satisfied? I don't care if you had a G-spot or not. I'm not like, I'm not going to sit here and debate that because I think we're, we're missing the point. But with the G-spot, what we've come to understand is that the clitoris is so much bigger than what we thought that it's likely the clitoris. And, you know, I go through a whole list of different ways to orgasm. They're by means, not the end all be all. But there's so many, like some people like, they like to be whispered to nipple gasms, like anal gasms. Like there's all of these ways to arrive there. And, you know, it's it's about like what's lighting up the brain as well. But I think that that dogmatic approach to sex, even when people are like, I'm sex positive, but then they're just like super dogmatic. I'm like, can you just let people have fun? Can you just let them mm. like they've got enough shame? Like we've been like we're weight, we're weighed down. Okay, we don't need any more. Yeah, a hundred percent agreed. And we've we've said this forever. And I know that a lot of people in the sex positive world uh, said, you know, pleasure is pleasure. You know, yep. if you're having consensual pleasure, fuck yeah to you. Doesn't matter how you're doing it again, as long as it's consensual. Like the ASMR kind of whisper orgasm mm -hmm. that you like the ASMR. Yes. Yeah. 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 This <laughs> There's, there's so many, I mean, there's, there's people that can orgasm just yeah. from someone like, you know, stroking their cheek, you know, it's just, it's yeah, all, or blowing it's all on so their ear. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and then here, yeah, here comes the brain is the largest sex, sex organ. And we, we, yeah, but we absolutely. Yeah. Which is why, like, I talk about, uh, uh, you know, in the book about how like people suffer spinal cord in injuries, they don't lose the ability. So these people like vaginal penetration is off the table. Like it's just not something like in terms of pleasuring them, like it's not working for them because of how the spinal cord injury has happened. Yet further up, like the <laughs> because your body is wired for pleasure and it's important for your health, your body's like, let's rewire things. And so you may find stimulating other areas of the body can actually bring you to orgasm. And so that's another reason why I think like, we, we need to, it's not inclusive to be so reductionistic in that because, and the other thing is that like majority of people who like fail to get aroused or uh, find that they are aroused and then fall out of it, like something that they're experiencing is this spectatoring, this like stepping out of your body, watching and judging yourself, worrying about like what noises am I making? Like, you know, can they see my cellulite? Like all of this kind of stuff. Like we don't need to be reinforcing that in any way because really to get to better sex, we need to just like drop all of that because sex is awkward and noisy and um, queefing happens while you're having sex, especially it, like some of the best positions will do this to you because friends air goes in, it must come out like, and like literally the brain cannot even let you register like rolls or cellulite or stretch marks or any of the things we start to like worry about because the brain is just like sex, pleasure, feels good. Don't care. I love the way it feels. So I'm going to go to this point. I was going to ask you something else, but you already mentioned this. So I want to go to this point that you just talked about. Queefing and squirting. Yeah. So <laughs> common, normal, what's up with these? Yeah, totally normal. So let me explain a couple of things. So firstly, queefing is not the same as farting and um, men really telling themselves on the internet where they like, they make some jokes and I'm like, oh, you really don't understand how the body works. Okay, maybe you should be quiet because this is embarrassing for you. And so what queefing is, is when air goes inside. I also see people and it's usually women who are saying like, well, if your pelvic floor was toned, well, if this, if that, da, da, da. I'm like, like uh, straight up the first time I queefed, I was like 12 or 13. And um, 
I was laying on my back and I rocked up, like grabbed onto my knees and rocked up. And when I did that just right, air went in. And as I contracted, air came out. And my friends were like, oh, you farted. And I was like, sure, because farting <laughs> is far less embarrassing than what just happened. And is that normal? Totally normal. Did I have pelvic floor dysfunction? Was something wrong with me? No, I had tissue that spread apart and came back together. And it's not the end of the world. This happens in yoga. So anybody swim like a certain way, like your vagina can be waterproof until you move just right in the pool. And then you're like, well, water just went in there or geez, heaven forbid you go down that water slide. Like <laughs> that, we all know that one water slide. So cleaving is totally normal. And especially like, you know, when you're going to notice it, like, oh, infamous doggy style hand grabbing your butt cheek, like pulling it to the side, like like that's just like, I have patients that are like, I don't want to do doggy style because like without fail, like sound, sound is going to happen. I'm like super normal, totally normal, yeah. totally common, nothing wrong with you. When it comes to squirting, if you squirt, totally normal. Should you try to squirt forcibly like you see in porn? No, that's usually pee and you don't, that will lead to pelvic floor dysfunction. That can be problematic, but squirting is normal. It can happen for a lot of reasons. Sometimes uh, it's not even happening with vaginal penetration. Sometimes it's anal penetration. Sometimes um, I've had patients say like, it only happens when I'm pregnant. I'm like, that makes sense. A lot of pressure down there, a lot of circulation down there, like makes sense that you would squirt. So, um, you know, everybody's like, well, it's just pee. Mm, it's not in fact just pee because there's fluids that have been found in there. And it, by the way, it has a sweet taste to it. And if anybody's wondering, is it normal to taste your own body secretions? It is totally normal to be curious and do that. There's mm -hmm. nothing, you're not going to die, friends. It's totally fine to do. From your own body. So, <laughs> it is. Yeah. yeah. It's like, do you worry about your saliva? Like, do you worry about like if your sweat drips in your mouth? No, but the Kids no. eat boogers all the time. Okay. They're fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've never so, intentionally done that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Nice try. <laughs> Eating a booger, but I can imagine it's salty. <laughs> Nice. So, but with squirting, there is a mix of uh, fluids that appears that it could be coming from the skein's glands, which is the uh, the uh, female body equivalent of the prostate. So that's what we got was the skein glands. So squirting, normal. It's not as common as queefing, but both normal. The queefing. So the queefing thing. I, I used mentioned yoga. So I think that I remember my first two queefing experiences. One was not was pre yoga. I think I was like fifteen or sixteen and getting my first. I mean, it's, I'm do air quotes, but it, it was really like finger banging, which was like not very pleasurable. Having someone kind of jab at my pussy, but I didn't know I was mm -hmm. a young person who didn't know how to speak up for my pleasure. You're probably you know, like, wow, sex sucks. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> it was like yeah. everyone says it's supposed to feel good, but this feels That's like the first. Like, you know, a couple decades of like being sexually active, by the way, for people listening is usually being yeah. like, oh, sex sucks. And then you're like, why are all these oh. postmenopausal women like loving sex? <laughs> Society's like, you're done. You're over. And they're like, yeah. no, no, I know how to get Great. what I want. I know exactly what I want. And I'm not. There is no threat of pregnancy. Like, I don't even have to worry about that. See, I, so I had in that experience. I was like, this doesn't feel that good. And then I queefed and the, my, my, the, my, they weren't my partner, the person I was, you know, getting Boy finger banged by. Oh, no, they were not Random my boyfriend. Dude. The one one night, or I think he lives in my neighborhood now. Um, <laughs> that guy, he like Fantasy. he he kind of, he like he, he he laughed. You know, it was it was embarrassing because like his response yeah. to it was like like oh my god, what just happened? And then I'm like, oh, yeah, but I, but I didn't say oh I farted. You know, I was just like I'm just gonna pretend like that didn't happen. And yeah, then yeah. And then it, it, it happened. The next experience was in yoga, doing a um, a, 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 what's it the, the incline the when, inversion dog. inversion. So when oh, you're like okay. on your back and then you're putting your legs up straight upward, mm -hmm. like as if you're trying to do like a headstand or like something. Like a three-way three-legged dog. No, 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 no. I'm Doesn't on matter. I'm on my okay. back and I'm doing an inversion, like a shoulder stand, shoulder stand. Yeah, yeah. Kind of that kind of thing. Or like um, and anyway, so I was doing that and I was next to my my dear friend at the time. And then I felt air go inside. And when I started putting my legs down, I it went now <laughs> and I I was like, ah and I mean I don't know who heard, but my friend looked, she's like, What just I was like, I just queefed. Yeah. And so then from then on, we decided for every class we would have to be in the back corner so I could queef with just her. <laughs> but then it just stopped. Then yeah, it just yeah. like, you know, my, I, I think, and, and I don't, this is a question for you. 
I think I started becoming more of a sexually active person. I started having sex more often. I started having orgasms more often. My body started getting used to having um, things inside of it, you know, but based on my own. And I, and I think that I, what my body was just getting used to like having, um, and not necessarily the air thing, but I think maybe developing more muscle tone or something mm -hmm. because now it's a, a rare thing. Like when, whenever I'm in yoga, I'm not like, oh, I'm going to queef because it's just like my body shifted out of that. Yeah, well, you also brought awareness to that area. And like, this is why I'm like, it's normal. It doesn't mean you necessarily just have pelvic floor dysfunction if it happens because there's so much going on in yoga, just like there's so much going on in sex. Um, maybe more so in yoga sometimes. <laughs> like, and that's a bad sesh. Just walk away. Anyhow, so in yoga, it may very well be that what was happening is that you brought attention, awareness, you started to learn how to engage your pelvic floor. So as you went into that move, you had more strength and that you you did develop that muscle tone. And so air wasn't coming in, but you could still have all of that and then do the three-legged dog. That's a common one. Move in the right way. And like, you can't be perfect on top of everything at all times, even in, you know, yoga or exercises. Unfortunate, right? But it's true. And then the air comes in, the air goes out. And again, like if the air goes in, it has to come out. And that is definitely a moment once you feel that air go in where you're like, well, <laughs> here we go. And, because, and then the sound is just tissue. It's just air reverberating past tissue, just like how I'm talking. Okay. So yeah. like, why we're not laughing about how I talk. Well, maybe some people are, but like, we're not like, that's just the same thing as air passing through tissue, making a sound. Like it's not, you know, we all make fart noises with our mouth. Like we know, we understand how that works, but you know what you were saying though, about like your first partner and or the first, <laughs> The, fir the first finger and it, it's not good. <laughs> then it's like even worse because like now you're like in your head and you're like, oh God, that was awkward. What was that? Like, how did that happen? Like, and now you can't be aroused. It can't be enjoyable because like you've left your body. You're like, um, up in the ether, just like observing, trying to like, you know, <laughs> just like I am now in Einstein mode, like calculating up here, trying to figure out like what actually happened and how to never have that happen again. And so... I think why I want to bring that up, I think it's really important for people to recognize that like that is the fastest way to rob you of pleasure is to allow these like normal things to like hijack your mind and and take you out of the mindfulness act. Like, you know, we're talking about yoga, like great for mindfulness and sex is also very mindful because you have to be present to be able to get to orgasm. And uh, plus, last piece about queefing. Slash talking about periods with penis owners. I think if you're sharing either fluids, maybe you're not, maybe you're not fluid bonded with this human, but you're sharing an intimate experience with them. If sounds coming out of your body are a huge issue, maybe you should rethink that person. Like be comfortable. Yeah. If they're if they're shaming you for like the sounds your body's making, like that's their problem. I love talking to straight dudes about my period. I'm like, yeah, my period right now. So and they'll be like, oh no. I'm like, dude, this is a normal, natural, normal. thing. And <laughs> I just call it bleeding. Pretty sure you're menstruating. I, I say like you menstruate. Let me tell you yeah. because I can tell. This is such a fun question, this next piece. And in your book, Is This Normal? We read, it's it's coming out soon, by the way, and we'll talk about that towards the end of the show. But we read something about butt lightning. So what the... Or lighting. Is it... Oh, butt lighting? I don't know. Is it butt or lighting? lighting. <laughs> so what the hell is butt lightning or lighting? <laughs> okay. So I do talk about butt lightning, uh, okay. what, like like where you lighten the tissue. <laughs> I do talk about that. People like bleach in their buttholes, bleach in their like, you know, bleach in everything down there. Okay, first let me like, actually, because I brought it up. Down there, okay, very concentrated in melanocytes. Melanocytes produce melanin. Okay, so that's what makes gives you pigment. So you get tans, right? Okay, so it's going to be darker down there by design. <laughs> Evolution is like fun spot. Like here it is. You can find it. Like does anyone care about their areola being too dark and wanting to bleach those? No, but like there's a whole industry being like, uh, yeah, your butthole should be like light colored. I'm like, why? Based on what? Or, you know, your vulva, like your vulva should be uniform and color. I'm like, I hate to break it to you. None of them are. None of them are. And that's totally normal. And they were these cells respond to estrogen. So as hormones change, like you go through puberty, like you have hormonal shifts in life, you're pregnant, all these kinds of things can cause the tissue to get darker and darker. And that is normal totally healthy. That's a healthy body. So, but light 
lightning, like you're being electrocuted, like a bolt, like Zeus got you in the bum. Like that's totally different. So, um, but lightning is what, like, I'd actually never heard it like that before. Um, until I actually saw it on TikTok and people were like, what is butt lightning? And it kept coming up over and over. And I'm like, oh, they're talking about that electrical shock that you get. Sometimes it can be in your, uh, butthole or it can be, um, sometimes it happens in the front side when you're pregnant. This is about nerves getting activated. So with butt lightning, it can be several different reasons. So sometimes it's the way your uterus is tilted. Sometimes like there is a condition going on with your GI tract, but when it's happening around your period, it can be due to elevated prostaglandins and those can be inflammatory. They're going to help your uterine lining shed, bleeding period, that stuff. But they can also get your rectum aggravated. And so you get up and randomly you're like, I just, I just got a bolt of lightning in my bum. Like, what is that? Um, it's not something like in most cases, it's not like, oh my God, you have like something majorly wrong with you. But it is worth discussing with your provider because it, I mean, it could be endometriosis. Um, it could be pelvic floor dysfunction. I was telling a friend of mine who's a PT, she's like, I don't like, I want your book, but I don't really do hormones. And I'm like, friend, the number of times I'm like, you should see a PT or OT uh, for your pelvic floor. And she's like, oh yeah, I'm buying your book. I'm like, yeah, like, <laughs> we talk about all of that because I'm like, why am I going to just talk to you about hormones? If like, there's this whole like nervous system and these muscles that also need love. Mm. Wait, so is this lightning that you're feeling? Because I'm just wondering, is it like a shock when you like uh, shock someone with the with, like if you have there's like one of those electrode things in the no, sex not world? that like okay. if you no, like, she's accidentally like wearing socks like yeah. going across the carpet. That's right what now. I'm thinking. Is that what it's like? <laughs> Thanks, Julian. Got me. Like, she's uh, like, uh, is that it's what it's like? Way more intense. Like people are like sometimes they're like, oh, it's like a zap, and some people are like, it's like I just got electrocuted. Like someone put a rod in my rectum and like shocked me. So I would know yeah. if I had experienced this before. I'd be yes, like, oh my would. god. Okay, so I'm happy that I I haven't. I guess because I was yeah. thinking like butt lightning. It's like you've been shocked with the pleasure. Buzz, buzz Lightyear when you say that too. Uh, so I've had to think. So is this what you're talking to about? Infinity then? and beyond with yeah. the bum. <laughs> but we're like maybe it doesn't feel that fun. I was excited. I was like I want to have some butt lightning, but I'll, now I'm like no, ship, no, ship, I don't. I'll light your butt with a Buzz Lightyear <laughs> light your dildo. It does exist, I'm sure. Um, so I've had, we had this thing's like a little off topic, but I don't know if you've ever experienced this with the more like in the the anal realm where all of a sudden I'll feel this really intense pressure. Kind Kind of around like the anus and like like the first part of the anal canal that hangs out for for like an hour it's almost and it's like re i need to like kind of lay in a fetal position like after a you've had penetration no it has nothing to do with any of that oh. not no penetration doesn't have to do with bowel movements um it can be something that just like comes on all of a sudden so you're not talking about that because that one doesn't feel like lightning it's like this almost like the muscles kind of stuck and like in this clenchy thing and yeah. then i take some ibuprofen and just chill for a bit and then it goes away that's not the lightning thing you're talking that's about. That's not the right? lightning. And that okay. could be a spasm, but it could also be a sign of hemorrhoids. It could be like internal hemorrhoids. Um, and so usually it does come on after a bowel movement, or it can be aggravated with anal sex, especially if you don't have enough lube. Everybody don't have anal sex without enough lube. Always, yes. That's like 101. Yes, yes. And lube is for everyone and every orifice. Like it's good. Okay, good stuff. So um, yeah, so it could potentially be an issue with that. But no, with butt lightning, it's like it feels like a shock like an electrical shock um because it's literally the nerves like lighting up like being like Woo! <laughs> like <laughs> wow i'm yeah huh. you just blew my mind yeah buzz but i wonder if there's any butt thunder happening at all. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a fart i'm pretty sure <laughs> I'm pretty it wasn't going thunder there. Clap. <laughs> yeah. Thunder clap. Okay. So um so we'll talk a little more about like libido stuff here. So yeah. so I, I think a lot of people feel like this is not like a common or there's a lot of this am I normal question around libido. Yeah. So there is, is it common to not be in the mood all or most of the time? And if this is true for vulva owners in particular, you know, how does this apply to vulva owners who naturally maybe don't have like the highest, higher sex drive, you know, how, mm -hmm. or, or is it also true that vulva owners should all have a naturally high sex drive or that yeah. we always have a lesser one than penis owners? That's uh, yeah. That's always like the way it goes. Like, here's that, like, the crazy thing is that like, I think medicine really sets the tone of like the, the male body and like what we think male body is like the standard. And then we've got this like inferior, lesser version that comes with baby making accessories. And then we get compared against that all the time. And then it's like, oh, well, you should have a libido that matches your male partner. Like if they have a penis, you should match that. 
And but then when you do, then we see things like uh, when Nicki Minaj was like, oh, when I, I expect to have an orgasm every time. Um, other actresses have talked about like, oh, like I have I have an orgasm like a you know 14 year old boy. And the media is like, oh, my God, they're like men like, oh, how repulsive. And I'm like, which, which it like pick, pick, pick. What is it going to be here? So. There's so much confusion. Um, there's a whole chapter on libido in my book. So firstly, there's a there's a quiz in there for understanding like things that pump the brakes, things that pump the gas in you. We think about those as like turn-ons and turn off, but like it's not a light switch. No, it's not like you just do this thing and you turn her on. It's like you've got to like take away these brakes and you gotta add on the gas pedal and like it's gotta, it's gotta be like this finesse. So there's those things that can be affecting us. Then there's kind of like the archetype of who you are. Now, like in almost every new relationship, everything is like muy fuego. Like it's just like hot. Like you, and everybody's like wanting to have sex. And like, that's like how we're wired and that's okay. And that's totally normal. And then it like starts to die off and people are like, oh, I have a low libido now. But what it really is, is that you probably reset to like what your normal is, like what your baseline would be. And so there is, you know, two ways of looking at this. There's the spontaneous desire, which is what people think high libido. And you're like, you know, sex is always on your brain. It's what we always see in media. And then there's the responsive desire, which gets called low libido, which is wrong. This is just somebody that's going to need stimulation. They, I say like, you got to get things going before things get going. Like the brain's not walking around with sex on the brain all the time. But when you start stimulating things in the right way, the brain's like, oh, yeah, when the, yes. Oh, we like that. Let's do this. And so you're not going to tend to be the initiator. You're not going to be the person that's like, oh, let's like get down. And that now here's the caveat might switch with your menstrual cycle in that if you have ovaries, there's a, what's been called the sexual phase. There was a research paper I came across and I was like, this is so brilliant because we always talk about the ovulatory phase, which is great. Like biologically, that's what's happening. That's why the hormones are doing it. And yet at the same time, it really reduces what I think medicine does all the time, women to just reproductive capacity. And instead of framing it of like, oh, this is just about ovulation, looking at like, well, this is actually your sexual phase of your cycle. So in the 28 day program, this is where I'm like, this is a good time to experiment. This is like play with the different types of orgasms. If you've been feeling like inhibited, but you want to try something good time because leading up to ovulation, the day your LH spikes. So that's when the brain says ovaries release your egg. And then about one to two days after that. So we've got about a five to six day window. You're going to have higher levels of testosterone and estrogen. And typically what we see is if you've got ovaries, you're going to fantasize about sex more. You might got yourself in the grocery being like, Ooh, look at that magazine. I got to get home. Like <laughs> partner or not, I need, I need to re be relieved. You know, I think like, you know, we always hear this about penises, like, Oh, I have to get relieved. I talk about pink balls in, <laughs> in the book. I'm like, yeah, like sometimes you need to get relieved if you have a clitoris as well. During that phase of your cycle, you are, this would be when you're more inclined to initiate sex. You're going to think about sex more. You probably have a much easier time getting aroused, getting lubricated, uh, hitting an orgasm, hitting multiple orgasms. And so this is like really important to understand because once you ovulate, What's left behind is the corpus luteum and it's going to produce progesterone. And this is where we see that meme where people like the guys are like, oh, I don't understand women. And they were like so into me one day and the next day like they weren't. And the woman says that's because we were ovulating. So true. Because when we're around ovulation, whether or not like, your body doesn't care who you have sex with or whether or not you want to have a baby, like ovaries and, and uterus are working on an agenda. We just don't tell them Shh, whatever you want. Like we don't have to tell them. <laughs> and so when they're working on that agenda, the agenda is like, let's capture sperm. This is also, if you want to try for a vaginal orgasm, the time you're going to be more inclined to have that happen, but it's, you're totally normal if it doesn't happen. And if it's happening with simultaneous clitoral uh, stimulation, but following that, that's when it's like, kaboom, drop off for a lot of people. And that's where they're like, mm, yeah, I would rather get into sweatpants than get into their pants. <laughs> It's so funny. I feel like when I'm ovulating, I'll go out into the world and I feel like 
the dudes can smell it on me and they're like, yes, they can. like and I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, guess I'm like doing really great today. I'm like, I, I must be ovulating. Well, are the stats also people uh, cheat, have affairs, et cetera, more so when they're ovulating, like when in the ovulation phase, I'm pretty sure it was like ma- sex educator Maybe, Mandel- Megan Andalou talked about oh. that. that I have more, to look like, into that. I'm not sure about that. I know strippers get paid more when they're ovulating. <laughs> <laughs> that I know. But um, this is why experimenting is really good at this part of your cycle is because your so your inhibitions are down your self judgment and being critical is also down so like this is where you're really feeling yourself because fine lines and wrinkles are less you're more curvy like your lips it's so funny because I will do videos and people are like, what's your lipstick? What are you doing? I'm like, I'm ovulating. My ovulate, like, <laughs> lips look so good. Um, your voice changes. So you sound sexier. Um, I feel like I should have changed to like, sex. I don't know what a sexy voice uh, sounds like coming from me, but um, um, I do, I do have to share. I read my audiobook and I pleaded with them to change the schedule. They literally started at the day I started my period. And I was like, come on, I'm going to sound so much better around ovulation. And they were just like, <laughs> Read and bleed, baby. Read and bleed. Like that's, that's just a, the way it is. We're we're going to be doing an audiobook for our book. Won't be out till November, but we need mm-hmm. we need one. We need a so okay. We need to align our schedules so that we're ovulating yeah. at the same time, and then do it when we're ovulating. This is brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Well, you like yeah. people, will, and it doesn't matter like you know their gender, how they identify. They perceive like a, a voice uh, that's ovulating to be more attractive. Um, like you also get rated as more attractive. Like people objectively are like yes, more attractive without knowing you, just looking at you. So it's definitely a time in your... Like one of the biggest inhibitors is like body image issue. Like that's why I talked about that earlier on. And this is a time where in the book, I'm like, I want you to get in front of the mirror and get naked and tell yourself what you love about yourself. And then... You know, the week before your period when you're starting to hate on yourself because that's like a normal experience living in the society that we do. You wrote it down like you've got your notes. You're like, no, 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 we're not going to do that. Like, here's what I love about myself, because one of the most powerful things that you can do to get more pleasure in your life is to love yourself, like wholeheartedly love yourself. And I know that sounds like, you know, when I talk about that sometimes, <laughs> And I'm in, I'm on a stage and I'm talking about that and people are like, oh, you know, self-love. And I'm like, so cliche. no, but like really no. like it works. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Take notes when you're ovulating and go back to them when you're not feeling good about yourself. Amazing. Right. Mm-hmm. That's a good idea. <laughs> Uh, I I just love when you are a guest on our show because you're brilliant. You really are. And it was funny because you actually were on our show. And then I had someone that didn't listen to the podcast. Some people are just like, oh, I don't know. I get uncomfortable because I know you so well. I don't want you to know about your sex life. You know, I'm from the Midwest. People are like, oh. I'm shy. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, have you read this Dr. Jolene Brighton's book? And I'm like, yes, she was on our show. You need to listen to the podcast. So anyway, this new book. So can you talk about, cause it's, I believe it's out in April, but please share. Is this normal? Yeah. We've referenced it a lot. Uh, who is it for? Because I'm assuming even of course, all the Volvo owners out there, but I'm, I'm assuming if you're even a person that's in relationships with Volvo owners or relationship, this would be helpful, but tell us more about your book and also where and when folks can buy this book yes. and how they can work so, with you. Sorry to throw all those at you. That's all. <laughs> it's okay. And your social so, security yes. number, your address, uh, five, 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 yeah. four. Okay, cool. <laughs> your blood type. Um, okay. So book comes out in the U S that's going to be April 4th in the UK. It's April 6th. They have totally different color covers and it's really exciting. Both have hidden vulvas. So definitely check them out. Um, I see it, <laughs> you I see it, it. on the cover. There it is. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. The um the publishers were like, oh, let's do something quirky with like the oh, and like let's make it like falling down. And that just felt to me like a like, oh women, you just like fell and you try. I'm like, no, 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 no. We're bold, we're unapologetic. It's a vulva. Like we're the O is a vulva. I actually like designed that O myself to be like because my designer was um, a man and uh, the first iterations were not, I was like, that's not a vulva. That's not what they look like. So anyhow, so find the vulvas on the covers Uh, and that's where it's coming out and they look totally different and they're really fun. And I'm excited about both of them. Uh, First half or first section of the book, your sexual self, we're getting into libido, orgasms, 
vulva, vagina. Um, by the way, I never shame anybody. And I say this in the book, like, I know that there's going to be doctors who come for me because they're like, everybody should call it what it is, a vulva or a vagina. And I'm like, but I love to say chocha. Like, I'm like, I have like, I love some like, pussy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We all have our different terms for it. And so I just want people to know that like, when it says shame free, like no judgment, like that is true. Like, so I'll teach you the parts, but I'll also embrace like whatever you want to call them. So orgasms, sex, sex of all kinds, how to troubleshoot pain with sex. What's up with discharge, right? Is it normal if you do the awkward drip walk from the uh, the, the bed that you just shared a penis with? Like it, it, it is. And I'll tell you more about it. And then the next part is your cyclical self. And that's where we get into all of the hormones. I hope you solve your hormonal issues, figure out what's going on for you, how to fix those uh, if that's where you're struggling. And then the 28-day plan, I marry the whole hormone issues that come up and the, you know, how to make your hormones their best with your sexual self. And you go through this 28 day program to understand what your normal is. And I will even give you all these protocols to like solve you know, period cramps, acne, all of that kind of stuff. And if you are someone, I would assume from this podcast, like you're into the sex stuff for, but for it. So everybody knows if you're like, yeah, I don't, I just want to not have acne or cramps. I don't really care about sex. You can do the program and not do the sex part and come back to it if, and when you're ready, I hope it's sooner than later. And I think it's going to be a really good time. It is the book that really, we should have learned all of this in sex ed. We really should have learned all of this and how it worked. And I took the approach in the US, you guys already said it. STIs, fear of the baby coming out, like fear-based education is what we got. And that robbed us of our pleasure. I took a note from what we see in the Netherlands, in Germany, where they teach pleasure-based education and how phenomenal those outcomes are. And I'm like, that's what we're going to do. We're going to lead with pleasure and knowing your body and owning your normal. So you can find the books wherever they're sold. You can find me at drbrighton.com. That's D-R-B-R-I-T-G-T-H-E-N.com. And then I'm on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube at Dr. Jolene Brighton. Yes, you are. You've got a great... I love all your content that you create on both TikTok and on Instagram. Like You're just uh, so much fun. So I'm not going to use the word genius again, although I believe that. So <laughs> you like... Yeah. So thank you, Jolene. You're just amazing. And um, we love what you do. Go and check out... Is this normal? Find that vulva. I think uh, the day this is released is the day it comes out. Oh, perfect. So, ah. so it's 20 right on, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> right? Yeah. So tag me if you find the vulva, everyone. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's like, now nah, where's Waldo? Where's vulva? Where's yeah. vulva? The vulvarine. I like calling it a vulvarine. Okay. I love um, that. That's what I'm going to be for Halloween this year. I say that every year. Yes. <laughs> Get stripes on it or something. Like, I guess that's like a tiger, but I just feel like... You can make it whatever you Wolverine want. Wolverine has the black. Oh my yes. God, yes. I'm going yes. to be the All really the really furry, curly one. Yes. Full bush. Whatever Wolverine you want to be, you be that. Yeah. Nails, no nails, whatever. Okay, anyway... For everyone out there listening, thank you for tuning in every Tuesday, Shameless Sex. I just want to invite you, before you do anything else, just rate us on iTunes. Give us five stars. You can just put an emoji if you're too busy to do anything else. You can also check us out on Spotify. You do have to listen to the full episode, but rate us. You don't have to do any writing there at all. You just hit the stars, five of them. Uh, we do read every single one. I'm starting to get a thicker skin because I need one because the book's coming great. out. Haters going, hey, but hey, you know what? We love what we do and we do it because of you. So thank you for listening, y'all, uh, and being part of the Shameless Sex Revolution. We'll see you. What is it next week, Amy? See you next Tuesday, perhaps? <laughs> oh, that was amazing. Um, <laughs> we love you all. Ciao for now.